The BBC News on BBC One Wales right now with Darren Jordan. President Bush tells European leaders to overcome their divisions over the war in Iraq. He calls for unity and a stand against global terrorism. Blair promises more evidence on Saddam's weapons of mass destruction. A left turn for the unions as the transport workers elect a new leader. And it's a domestic treble for Rangers as they lift the Scottish Cup. Good evening. President Bush has urged Europeans and Americans to overcome the deep divisions caused by the war in Iraq and to unite in the fight against terrorism. In a major foreign policy speech, he said America was committed to a strong Atlantic alliance to provide security and advance human freedom. Tonight, he joined other world leaders in the Russian city of St. Petersburg in the largest summit since the war in Iraq. An almost royal appearance on the balcony of a Tsarist palace. Still a warm welcome for the American president tonight, even though he turned up late for Mr. Putin's party. And the message he brought with him from Poland, the urgent need for Europe and America to bury their differences. We have seen unity and common purpose. We've also seen debate. Some of it healthy, some of it divisive. New theories of rivalry should not be permitted to undermine the great principles and obligations that we share. The enemies of freedom have always preferred a divided alliance because when Europe and America are united, no problem and no enemy can stand against us. In St. Petersburg tonight at the festive banquet, no hint of disagreements or tensions. To your health. President Putin's champagne toast saluted George Bush as his good friend. Mr. Putin was clearly anxious to show the American first couple were his guests of honor, and quarrels over Iraq shouldn't spoil relations. As they waited for the outdoor show in the palace gardens to start, they sat in awkward silence. But by the time the lavish spectacle got underway, they were both making an effort. But as for other public demonstrations to show Washington is patching up rocky relations with Europe, they barely materialized. President Chirac left before the banquet. His office said he'd meet Mr. Bush at his G8 summit on Monday. Chancellor Schroeder shook his hand, but slipped off early. The breakdown of trust over Iraq has left plenty of rancor. One evening's festivities in St. Petersburg was never going to repair the transatlantic alliance. The real question is how far they're prepared to compromise with each other. And the test of that may come in George Bush's talks with Vladimir Putin tomorrow and the G8 summit in France that follows. Bridget Kendall, BBC News, St. Petersburg. Tony Blair has insisted there is no doubt that Saddam Hussein's regime possessed weapons of mass destruction. And he's promised to publish a new dossier of evidence to prove it. Pressure's been growing on Britain and America to back up this key justification of the war in Iraq. Our political correspondent John Pinar reports. It's all harmony in St. Petersburg, but it's not long since President Putin ridiculed the idea of hidden Iraqi weapons of mass destruction waiting to be found. After reports of sceptical intelligence officers, even the old minister, Tony Blair has used an interview to say he's seen secret evidence and he means to make it public. I certainly do know some of the stuff that has been already accumulated as a result of interviews which, with which scientists and others, which is not yet public, but what we are going to do is assemble that evidence and present it properly to people. UN inspectors spent months searching for evidence of Saddam Hussein's destructive power before the war. They turned up no conclusive proof, and their work came to a halt when the US-led coalition decided they'd had time enough. Now Mr. Blair's convinced the proof to satisfy any skeptic will come to light eventually, though helping the people of Iraq was still his top priority. The fact is now our focus has got to be on the immediate reconstruction of Iraq, but I keep saying to people, be patient about this. Those people who are sitting there saying, oh, it's all going to be proved to be a, a great big fib got up by the security services, there'll be no weapons of mass destruction. Just wait and have a little patience. 
In the new mood of reconciliation, people may be patient. They sat through President Putin's video show about architecture in St. Petersburg, after all. But the row about the Iraq war left a lot of people feeling the strain, and it hasn't been forgotten. Proof that it was all worthwhile will need to be very convincing to satisfy the skeptics. John, does Tony Blair believe he finally has the evidence on weapons of mass destruction to take on his critics? Well, Darren, uh, Tony Blair seemed to be personally convinced that uh, this evidence existed for some time, but now he's raised expectations that somehow, maybe, just maybe, he's got a Trump card up, its, up his sleeve, and it'll have to be. Uh, before the war, there was a succession of dossiers and presentations, none of which made a big enough impact, and they were looked at through a magnifying glass. The next one is going to be studied through a microscope. And as for the suggestion that intelligence material was, was hyped up, well, Downing Street's so painfully sensitive about that that senior staff have been sent out to say that Tony Blair values the relationship with the security services very much and would do nothing to imperil that relationship. He needs to win this argument. It's not just about justifying the war, though goodness knows that's a big enough task. It's also known really about the, the Prime Minister's integrity. John, thank you very much.